Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam explains the pros and cons of Linux. Perhaps you yourself might be interested in Linux? He also explains why Linux may not be for you. Let the OS flame wars begin. Yes, you heard correctly. Uh, after watching this video, you may in fact find that Linux just isn't for you. Uh, that's okay. And this whole video uh, actually kind of falls into uh, my philosophy on life. And that is, is that time is one of our most precious resources. And unfortunately, a lot of people take time for granted. But time, uh, unlike other resources, is just one of those things that once you spend time, you can never ever get it back. It's lost forever. So because time is so precious, uh, if you so choose, uh, I recommend picking an operating system that uh, minimizes uh, spending this valuable resource uh, unless uh, you're like me and you really really want to learn a lot about computers. So having said all of this, um, the comments I'm about to make during this video uh, are just very very broad generalized statements so do take them with a grain of salt. So one of the examples I'm going to use is Mac OS X. Now <clears throat> it's generally uh, accepted um, that Mac OS X is pretty good at creating content such as uh, movies, pictures, and music. Uh, it's not quite as good for gaming. On the flip side you have Windows which is pretty good for gaming, actually very good for gaming, and as far as uh, creating content uh, it gets the job done, it's okay, but maybe not as good as a Mac. So let's say your main goal is to game uh, on your computer and let's say you anticipate spending maybe 80 percent of your time gaming well if that's the case windows may be the operating system of choice uh, likewise if you are planning on spending maybe 80 percent of your time on the computer creating content such as videos and photos and or music uh, perhaps mac os 10 is the way to go i guess my point is since time is such a valuable resource uh, I firmly believe you should pick an operating system that works the best uh, for you and your time. So I guess I'm not trying to discourage Linux. Um, and in fact, uh, you may be able to set up gaming in Linux uh, running Wine. The issue is, is that uh, it could take a lot longer to set up. So if you're spending a lot more time trying to set this all up under a Linux environment, uh, that's a lot less time that you're spending gaming. So you just have to evaluate what you really want out of your computer. Now with all of this said, I think it is a fantastic idea for people to at least become familiar with Linux and its capabilities. And in fact, in future videos, I want to show you how to do this without even touching your current uh, operating system's hard drive. I also want to give you many options to make this as time efficient for you as possible because, as I said, uh, time is a very valuable resource. We'll start with the cons first because I feel that you should always end a video on a positive note. So some cons of Linux. Um, one of the things I find fascinating is a lot of people get fed up with Windows, right? They'll say, you know what, I'm sick of Windows, I'm sick of the way I'm being treated, I'm going to try Linux. And then when they start trying Linux for the first time, uh, even though they were looking for something different with Windows, I mean, that's the reason they switched anyway, uh, they find out that Linux isn't like Windows, and then they get annoyed because it's not what they're used to. So I just find that fascinating. But because of this, um, one of the things that is a little bit trickier about Linux is that uh, it has a little bit uh, steeper learning curve, um, especially if you're used to Windows. Uh, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just that it is uh, a little bit of time consuming and can frustrate new users. Another uh, con uh, is that, uh, as already discussed, uh, gaming uh, in Linux uh, isn't quite as good. Uh, this isn't the, really the fault of Linux operating system, it's just that uh, a lot of game developers don't always port their stuff to the Linux operating system. Uh, another issue that I found uh, is that video editing, although decent in Linux and has improved uh, significantly over the years, um, isn't quite as good as what I would expect uh, on a Windows operating system platform or a Mac OS X platform. So this next one I think is a pro, but it also has a con to it as well, and that is you have 100% control of your operating system. Now, a lot of people think that that's fantastic, uh, such as myself, but one of the side effects to this is that 
you can do really, really stupid things, and the operating system may not warn you that you're about to do something really, really stupid. And this can be kind of frustrating for new users. Uh, in Linux, it's all about choice. And one of the things that's kind of, that could be a con for new users is the amount of choice. I mean, you have Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, uh, Mint, Fedora, OpenSUSE, uh, Arch Linux, and the list just goes on and on and on. And for a new user, it may be kind of difficult to figure out which flavor of Linux that they want to run, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of some of these flavors, and that can frustrate new users. Another con could potentially be hardware support. Now, I haven't had really any issues, and hardware support in Linux has improved dramatically over the years. Uh, some of the issues may come in when you're trying to run bleeding edge uh, hardware, uh, and it's just taken uh, a little bit of time for the Linux community to actually catch up to the latest and greatest hardware. So uh, if your hardware isn't supported, like let's say you can't get sound or your video card isn't working or supported, um, this could also be very frustrating, uh, especially to new users. Now having said all of that, uh, one of the awesome things about Linux is that you can easily uh, go download a live distribution CD, put it on a CD-ROM, and then boot up from the CD-ROM and actually test your hardware before you even come close to installing the operating system. That way you will know that all of your hardware is supported before you invest all of this time actually installing the operating system. Okay, those are enough cons for now. Let's look at some of the positives. One of the big positives is choice. Uh, for example, you don't like your file manager? Switch it out for a new one. Don't like your graphical user interface? No big deal. Swap it out for a new one. Another positive is a lot less viruses uh, under the Linux operating system, especially when compared to the Windows operating system. Now, this is for a couple of reasons, um, but uh, Linux definitely as a whole um, is a lot more secure in the way that uh, it is set up. Now, I'm not saying that Linux couldn't get viruses uh, or malicious software, um, but uh, the inherent uh, setup of Linux, uh, I feel, is much, much better than Windows. Going on the whole theme choice again, uh, Linux is all about scalability. So, basically with Linux, uh, you'll start out with the kernel, and then the Linux kernel, and then from there you'll just add different components to it. So the advantage to this approach is that you can pick as many resources as you want, or you can pick as little resources as you want. So you, as the end user, you get to choose how much resources are used up by your computer. So this approach is fantastic for servers, right? You can have a lot less overhead uh, using up very little uh, resources. Or if you want, uh, this is fantastic for a desktop, right? If you want a little bit more eye candy and you want your uh, desktop to be a little bit more functional because you can afford these resources, um, then you can set it up that way. And finally, one of the biggest um, pros to Linux operating system is the openness of the operating system itself. So what does this mean? Basically, anyone has access to the source code, and this has a whole range of awesome effects. So one is security, right? Uh, if other people are looking at the code, um, they can quickly determine if something is insecure and fix it. So I kind of think of this as a peer review. Uh, everyone's kind of peer reviewing each other. Now, I don't have the capabilities of doing this, but it's nice to know that other people do. And if I did learn how to do this, um, it's great knowing that I could eventually do this myself. So here's the deal. I know I've given a quick, okay, maybe not so quick, but uh, nonetheless a comparison between Linux operating system and the Windows operating system, and I even sprinkled in some Mac OS X there. But uh, even if you want to stay with your main operating system, which I think is perfectly acceptable, I still recommend uh, either uh, setting up a Linux Live CD, or better yet, uh, if your hardware supports it, a USB stick with the Linux operating system. Uh, I hope to cover this in future videos, um, but the advantage to this is that it's not that time consuming. Uh, you get to become familiar with Linux, which is in my book always cool and the biggest advantage though is that now you have a tool uh, to rescue your main operating system if unfortunately something bad were to happen to that and I think it's always better to be prepared and one of the cool things about Linux is that it is a great uh, rescue uh, uh, tool. As always be sure to check out my website greenhornlinux.com. Thanks for watching.